Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft, the Burning Crusade Classic, and our Tauren Warrior playthrough. Thank you guys for clicking on the video and joining me today in Azeroth. I really do appreciate it. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, you might be thinking if you saw the end of the last episode, shouldn't there be a Dire Maul East to run? And the short answer is, I did go to Dire Maul East with that group for a little bit. But it didn't work out. Uh, it was an interesting dungeon, it seemed, but it was a really miserable run. Between the mage, the DPS warrior, and the enhancement shaman we had on DPS, I couldn't keep threat off of anybody. And we all know how much I love not being able to keep threat on anybody. So, yeah, and so part of that is like probably our fault. I feel like Dire Maul is like more severely tuned than other dungeons as far as like damage that goes out so it's it's less forgiving when a dps pulls threat and is getting hit so between there was always one of them that had threat basically between the mage the warrior and the enhancement shaman somebody always had threat on one or two enemies in big pulls and the healer did not have enough mana to heal them through that not that they should be expected to but they couldn't. And I couldn't hold threat on everything um, consistently enough, apparently, to stop them from basically getting themselves killed. Now you might think, you know, if you're a DPS and you pull threat off the tank, you do it pretty quickly, let's say, and you see that you're taking a lot of damage, it might make sense for you to, you know, switch to another target. Maybe one the tank has more threat on. Uh, these people didn't do that. I think they were just expecting the healer to be able to keep them up. Uh, we wiped three times. After the second wipe, we actually replaced a DPS, stuck with it, ran out, summoned in. And then uh, in the garden was where we had our last couple of wipes on groups of treants that would path. And so instead of uh, letting me kind of pull the one group back and let, and let the other group keep going, uh, we threw down a bunch of totems right where the group was going to path back to. And as I'm trying to pull three of them back away from the, the rotating three, the totems pull everything. So we wiped there in the garden twice. And that was it. And it was a struggle to even get there, so... I should have probably stuck with my original thesis, which was that I did not uh, believe it was worth doing... Any more dungeons in vanilla on this character. It was cool to see it, you know, I, I, it seemed like it'd be a really cool dungeon. Uh, if I were prot spec, it might have gone a little better. If the healer had been heal spec, it might have gone a little better. If the DPS had just been a little bit responsible and like held off a little bit on DPSing, you know, like the three second rule, when, when a tank's having trouble getting threat, you just kind of give them a few seconds and then you can pick the target he's on and go in. They, none of that awareness was present, so. Uh, yeah, that's the story behind that. We got a little bit of experience, but obviously we wiped early right away because the healer just didn't have the mana to sustain a pull, basically. Like I was talking about, there'd always be one of the DPS who'd managed to get something on him. And uh, because they would just keep hitting that one thing in an attempt to kill it, I could not get it off of them because they would not switch targets. And the healer couldn't keep him alive, and so we'd lose one, then we'd lose another. And eventually the healer would go, ooh, that's how we... Uh, that was our first wipe. That was pretty early, so we lost the ribbon dance buff right away. People were not happy about that. I was not happy about that. So all in all, it, you could just say that it was a shit show. And you'd be, you'd be pretty accurate in saying that. Uh, yeah, I'm not... Haven't found Urseus. Don't know if we're going to ever find Urseus. I, I'd love to just get into an area that has significant owl beast activity. Oh, we, we did kill her. So the, the good thing that come, came out of it that I completely forgot is that we did complete this quest that turns in in Cat Mojave and Fairless. Lethendris's web. Cool. Okay, well, there's there's the silver lining. We got a little bit of kill experience, though not as much as we should have gotten. And we uh, we completed the quest, so... But yeah, my level of frustration is was such that... Uh, that 
and as short as it was, it will not it will not be a video that goes up on the channel. I, I pretty much decided that uh, a couple minutes into the run. Once I realized that it was going to be me frustratedly trying to pull threat and taunt off of three different individuals, uh, I decided that it wasn't going to be a run that I put on the channel. There is lots of better angry WoW content out there, if that's what you're in for. <laughs> We don't need to see me just angry at everybody in the group. I don't like being angry at people. Or frustrated with people at all in the game. I like everyone to do their thing and to have a good time. Unfortunately in group play, uh, that requires people to behave in uh, specific ways. And to know specific things. Uh, that not everybody does and not everybody knows. I'll get some potions going today before we are 75% of the way through the video. Promise. Yep, inventory is about what I'd expect to. Let's do this and this. Still no beta invite today. I'm thinking that there's just not going to be another wave going out now until next week. This is Wednesday as I'm recording this, so... Tuesday has come and gone with no beta invite for me. Not that I think I necessarily deserve a beta invite any more than anybody else, but I mean, my, my WoW sub has been active for three years. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> how, how many people have had an active WoW sub for three straight years without uh, canceling it or suspending it a single time or having it lapse in payment a single time? Uh, in this environment, today? I think a lot of people like play the game when they're into it, and when they're not playing it, they let their subs lapse. But yeah, I don't know, I've had an active account for a long time, you'd think that would, uh, have some kind of bearing. I know you need, you need an active account to be considered for beta. But I guess, I guess they don't really care to look at, uh, they're not giving seniority to people, right? Which in a way is good. In another way, as humans, we always want to be rewarded for perceived loyalty, so in, in another way it's kind of annoying. Uh, we're done with this. Uh, what do we... Yeah, so just Urseus now, which... I mean, face it, guys. We're probably not gonna find Urseus. We still need Ragged Owl Beast, and we need to see if we can get some Totemics to spawn today. So, let's go work on that, shall we? I was hoping to get some kind of quest having to do with like the spirits and stuff around the Night Elf Ruins. I remember a pretty cool quest we did on the Alliance Warrior, but maybe that was an Alliance specific quest.
Uh, well, I was going to say before we go down here, let's see if any spawn down here, but uh, yeah, we came down here anyway. Yeah, see, there's these Anguished Highborn. That I, I'd love to get that quest and read that, but I don't think that we're going to be doing that on the Horde side. If only we can get back up here. <laughs> there we go. We have a 30-minute disease called Festering Rash that reduces all attributes by 21. Oh man, the half-hour diseases. That's uh, pretty brutal for us. Alright, well, not much we can do about it. Oh shit, did he just cleanse that? Oh. He's too, he's too off for us. See, when I do talk, I tend to, like, want to say too much. Like, I, I like to talk in full, proper sentences and stuff like that. <laughs> Which not a lot of people have time for these days. And I'm, I'm, like, a pretty quick typer, but every year I get just a little bit slower. I, I used to aspire to be a writer. So I used to type, like, hundreds of pages a week. Right, I would write it out longhand. This is how s smart I thought I was. So I thought it was going to be better if I like wrote it out longhand and then typed it. <laughs> I was basically just like killing myself for the better part of a decade by writing everything out longhand in a notebook and then typing, transcribing from said notebook into Word. Obviously, that that didn't stay that way forever. Eventually I learned the error of my ways, but by that point I'd already handwritten tens of thousands of pages and meticulously typed them back out. So I used to be quite fast at typing. I often say that, that the ability to type properly from the home row was probably the only useful thing I learned in high school that I did not teach myself. Because man, that keyboarding class really did it for me. But these days, I'm slow, so yeah, I try to like, type back to people and it just, uh, doesn't come out quickly enough. Alright, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna look for totemics. Yeah, here's one. Maybe we're gonna have better luck today. I see two right away. Okay, that's promising. I could have cleaved, yep, I could be cleaving. Much cleave is desired by you guys. I could destroy some of the flippin' totems too. Uh, can we just do this? And, and do this? And do this? There we go. 20 minutes later we'll kill the actual guy.
Uh, but again, someone else has been through these camps, so... We're probably going to be in a position where we're going to be looking for respawns. We'll check this chest, but I, I really don't want to loot anything out of it. We're running out of inventory space. Highly doubtful there's going to be anything good in it. Oh, we got the Helm of Awareness. Okay, so we got a piece of gear. It's not necessarily an upgrade, I don't think. It, it was an upgrade for tanking, right? So the Helm of Awareness has 493 armor, 17 stamina, increases our dodge rating by 24. Uh, but we give up 15 strength, we give up 7 agility, and we give up frost resist. So I want the strength for, for questing. I'm going to put that back on. But yeah, we did get an item, just wasn't really a great upgrade for us in general, except as a tank. So, no more totemics here. We can cut around the little lake, uh, look for Owl Beast, and then try to check out this other camp of Firbolgs. That could be a plan, and then we'll come back here, uh, eventually we will get what we need. It just might take a little bit of time. We have three, we need eight. So, we need five more. I, I do notice that I have uh, a, a whisper or tell that I'm I'm ignoring. I do I do sometimes notice these things. Sometimes I don't notice at all. Uh, other times I notice later. And uh, the best way, like if you're if you're thinking you want to direct message me, or you see me online in the game. The best thing to do is just DM me on Discord. Um, I I often almost always have my Discord up on my second monitor as I play, and like an in-game whisper, unless I'm looking for a group. Probably not, I, I usually ignore in-game whispers, not out of any like malicious intent, but just to think like, uh, if I'm recording, I don't know what's here. <laughs> this is a mystery box right now, anything could be here. And I, I just don't like to handle that kind of stuff on recording. Just to like, respect people's privacy, in case they don't want their messages like, on a recording. And then I don't want to have to try to remember to come, come back and do editing to like, edit it out. So that's often why I like... If you've ever whispered me, and I haven't responded in any way, shape, or form, A, I might not have seen it at all. B, I saw it, but I'm recording. And I tend not to check these unless I'm looking for group when I'm recording. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm usually always on Discord, so my DMs are open. You can just, if you see me online, you want to send me a message, just shoot me a DM in Discord. And uh, that way, even if I can't answer it right away, I'll, I'll be able to see it. Like, once, once I log out, like... Remembering later that I had a whisper after I've logged out is, is useless. But if it's in Discord, it's just there waiting to when I can get to it. Which I will do my best to do. So yeah, hit me up there. See, we're getting luckier with these totemic spawns, but I, I'm seeing other players in the area is just kind of making me nervous, so I want to get in there as quickly as we can.
I'm not seeing any over this way. Can mount back up. Okay, there's one. I feel like we should just like clear out this entire camp, like clear everybody out. And uh, see, we'll see what respawns here. Oh, you know, we might have a few to get. Cause see, it it, it is all random. Because last time we were here, it, it wasn't spawning any totemics. It did spawn like everybody in as something else. So sometimes the answer is to kill everything and let it respawn. These totems are, like, really annoying, though. I'll say that. Oh, good. Time to do some retaliation here. We will cleave. I will do that. I'll pop my trinket here for a little bit of healing. Not the cleanest pulls I've ever done, but uh, thank you, Retaliation, for saving us yet again. Highborn pauldrons. Some cloth pauldrons with stamina and spirits. Pretty classic look there. Okay, well, that was fun. Let's uh, use a bandage here, get a little bit of our health back at least. He just keeps laying them. It's, it's like it's like playing whack-a-mole at the arcade, right? That's what these totems are. Is he going to keep doing that? Yeah, it seemed like that was something he was going to keep doing as long as we kept destroying them. So maybe we just focus on them and ignore the totems till after. Uh, that being said, do we want to just fight a few more of these guys and maybe hang out for some respawns? We only need one more totemic. I mean, he could be respawned back at the other camp already. I have stuff that has to be turned in over here, though. And I think this quest might be one of them. So there's that. Oh, that was good. Yeah, look, we've already got a respawn up over here. Or maybe one we just didn't see before. But it feels like a respawn. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, that's what we needed. Uh, the Owl Beast, we need two more of them. Let's kind of scour the area before we go turn these quests in, because I, I don't know where this one turns into. It, it could be that it turns it back into... Actually, we're really close to this one over here. Let's, let's come up here and just get this turned in really quick, if we can, if we have a, a way to get up there, which uh, might be questionable. Some of the terrain is questionable. This looks good. There we go. Uh, do we have anything to turn in back down in Feralus? No, okay. I thought one of the quests came from Feralus, but maybe it turns into the person up here. Thank you for what you have done, as saddening as it is. Accept this as a token of thanks. Uh, we will take this and sell it. I would ask of you to please continue helping us. 
We have very few allies on which to call upon, and without your aid, the threats against my tribe would surely be too much for us to handle alone. 9,000 experience. Jeez, that's a lot. Okay, cool. So that's a repeatable that we could do if we were farming rep with them, which we are not going to be doing. I really can't remember, are there any big rep grinds that we're going to want to do in Wrath of the Lich King? I haven't done like a good, a good current rep grind for like current content. Probably since like original BC and the Netherwing stuff. Like, compared to World Quest, doing a good old-fashioned rep grind sounds amazing. Great to meet ya. Oh, we've done a lot of stuff for you. Uh, let's check out Strange Sources. That's where we went to investigate that area, I believe. Yes, the demons there in Dark Whisper Gorge. I believe it is their presence that is affecting the land in this way. I'm going to continue observing the hot springs here and see if I learn anything more. I'd wait until you are a bit stronger if you have plans of heading further into Dark Whisper Gorge. Yeah, we figured that out. Vadir looks are back already. It's been days. I'll need one vial to make sure that this is truly the elixir. Yes, this is the stuff. The elixir will allow you to speak with the one that you would not normally even see. Take the Vadir elixir along with Lincoln's sword to the graveyard just outside of Gazakstan and Tanneris. Once there, drink the potion. You may be quite surprised at the results, but do not be alarmed. In your other form, head due north until you reach the mountains. You'll find the one you need to speak with in one of the rocky crevices. His name is Gar Garlian. Garian. Okay, I mean, this sounds interesting, but it's some, kind, it's some kind of big Zelda reference, right? Remember, he will only speak with you in that form. Oh! <laughs> Our inventory is full. Yeah. Okay. Drop this bad boy. How are you? Watch your back. What's on your mind? Uh, anything else we can drop? Mystery meat can go. War bear leather can go. Bear organ, unspecified bear organ can go. Yep. Let's get that out of our bags. Keep your feet on the ground. Okay, that moved us along quite a lot. Uh, we do still need to find the last few of our Owl Beasts here, though. And then we need pristine Yeti Horns from back, all the way back to the east. The good news is I think everything else turns in back in town. I don't think we have to run back here to turn anything else into either of these people. So that's good. I kind of want to aim for, 50, for uh, 57 today, but I'm kind of worried that that might be a little bit ambitious. I think the last time I really pushed for a level was on the Human Priest in Outland, and I think that was part of what, like, burned me out on the character right away. As, as I had one time where I, I thought for sure we were going to get, like, I think it was level 64, and it ended up being so many more quests than I had originally thought it was going to take. Yeah. That was bad. So I don't want to do that to myself. <laughs> Maybe I should just chill and uh, not set any short-term goals here. Short-term goal, finish this quest. There we go. That seems a little bit more realistic. I 
I wish we had a quest for these guys and the bears. Like, they're wasting lots of opportunities here to uh, give us stuff to do. Uh, I don't see anybody walking around up here. Yeah, it says there can be some up top here, but oh boy, we can get up here, can't we? We are not getting really lucky with this now, are we? Jeez, are we going to have to go south of the road here to find more? I wonder if they're sharing their spawn points with things like bears and these chillwind guys. Here's one. Hey, there we go. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's gonna turn in. Ooh, where does that turn in? Oh no. Oh, this must turn in back in the Fellwood, right? Okay, so we can fly down there at the end and turn that in. That's good. Corrupted Sabers available? Oh, that's the one that we couldn't figure out with the Moonwell. Okay. All right, that's that's fine. Uh, we could take another run through this area and see if we can find Urseus. I might take these Plagueland lead-ins. We we might step into the Western Plaguelands for a little bit. It might be the easiest place for us to go to get uh, to get our last little bit of experience here. Yeah, I think if we were to do that, that would be it'd be pretty quick. We would take all the front-loaded quests and knock them out, and I think that would probably get us from level 57 to 58 pretty expediently. And it would probably be better than scrounging for quests in other places or doing low-level quests somewhere. Like, we have some level 50 quests that we can do in the Blasted Lands, but that's not going to get us 9,000 experience a quest now, is it? It might get us, like half of that so maybe not worth it maybe we just go to the plague lands i had a bad time there on my season of mastery warrior uh that season of mastery warrior was woefully undergeared because i did not get to do anywhere near the number of dungeons that i thought i was going to do the season of mastery wasn't really set up to inspire you to do dungeons other than getting the quest done once because you got a bunch of experience from the quest but they didn't buff kill experience at all so, yeah. Wasn't much... And then, like, trying to do dungeons on the Alliance side is pretty awful. Like, only getting to do Scarlet Monastery a, a handful of times was devastating as far as, like, what gear we were able to get. We did not get the gear that we would have wanted to get. You know, if we had been incentivized and physically able to run it, you know, half a dozen times, let's say. Okay, yeah, we will go over here and uh, do the Yeti horns. Yeah, that's not going to get us... These two quests are not going to get us to 57, so... I do just need to chill. Uh, and uh, just go with the flow. And I, I think, like I said, I will probably be taking us... over into the Western Plague Lands for our next episode. Oh, hi there. You are much larger and closer than I anticipated. So see, now we need the Patriarchs. But now they're not orange because we leveled up in the meantime, so... It's not nearly as, as hard to get through their health. Uh, we're hitting a lot more consistently. 
which is always good. Problem is going to be uh, maybe finding enough patriarchs to. Oh, a failed attempt? We haven't had a failed attempt in a long time. No quest item though. Yeah, the hard part's going to be finding these patriarchs. I only remember seeing a few of them last time we were in the area. Here we go. Oh, there's a couple right here. What I probably don't want to do is pull both of them together. There we go, just give us a bunch of health back, why don't you? Ah, uh, where did he wander off to? Oh, he wandered off way back there. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm assuming that I, I can't avoid that. This is uh, WoW Classic, so... <laughs> I'm assuming that's just targeting us, and no matter what I do, we're going to get hit by it. I could have stopped by town and emptied our inventory. That is uh, most definitely something we could have done. Hasn't become a problem just yet. Oh, so we're looking for horns. We're not going to get horns by skinning them, Robert. But we will get lots of rugged leather, and that's always good. Am I going to want to fight my way back into the cave for this one? That's the question. Ah, uh, there's one down here. Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a matriarch. We can do matriarchs or patriarchs. Okay. Alright. Let's be inclusive here. Oh, we're going to get two for one. Mama and Papa. Here we go. I'll do a cleave. I'll get this in there, guys. There we go. Did basically nothing. There was a 400 crit off the cleave. I hope you're happy. Inventory's full. Oh no, we're gonna make room because I need to skin you. Yeah, I'm kind of worried that by going into the cave, we're going to fight a lot of them that we don't necessarily need to. But we do have 20 minutes left on our ribbon. 
dance buff, so maybe that's okay. One-handed mace, bless wind, hammer of the monkey. Looks pretty cool. For like a paladin or a priest or something. Just a double parry on the auto attack and on uh, Mortal Strike, no big deal. And there we go, that's our second and only necessary pristine horn. We can pull out of here now. Why did I not loot you? Oh, yeah, no, we're not gonna stand for that. Deep fried bananas, mm. Uh, we could do one more quick look for Ursius, I suppose, along his uh, outlined path on, on the map. But then again, it, it shows a little path, but then it marks him to spawn anywhere. Which is a little confusing, yeah. It's a little bit of a mixed message. But we can try it. See if we don't get dismounted and murdered by a bunch of Yeti.
interesting. Greetings. Have a good one. What can I do for you? For the Alliance. Do I have a deal for you? Can I help you? See you around. Yeah, taking a look at the map, I, I don't know if we will uh, if we will get all the way into Eastern Plaguelands, and that's where these quests do seem to take us. So, uh, we'll be doing Western Plaguelands, most definitely. But I, I think with the little bit of experience that we currently need to get the 58, that we probably won't do both. Let's go down to Blood Venom Post, and we'll get this one turned in. But yeah, a couple people have pointed out that we could stay in the old world, that there's plenty of stuff you can still do in the old world that can get you like easily to level 61. My counter to that, and um, you guys can correct me if this is wrong, but I'm pretty sure that level 58 and above, the quests that we take in Outland give, give more experience than like the level 57, 58, 59 quests that you're going to do in the old world. So I, I think the way the math works out, as soon as you hit 58, it's better just to go into Outland. You're going to have so much to do in Outland that you're not going to finish every quest before you hit 70 by any stretch of the imagination. You're going to have like entire zones that you don't even have to quest in. So I don't see like a compelling reason to stay in the old world and push myself to find more stuff to do here. 
when the questing in Outland is going to be... It's, it's structured in a smoother way because the design has changed in BC and the quests themselves just give more experience. So also while we're questing being able to get Outland resources like the cloth and skins from creatures I, I want to get in there at level 58 as soon as we can get through the portal. I don't want to spend... I don't want to spend my level 58 post experience uh, in the old world. So there is that. I mean, you could do it if you were like really interested in a zone story. Could be one thing to do it. Uh, one reason to do it if you just really wanted to see the story of a zone play out. As much as the stories play out in any zone in, in vanilla. And let's be honest, we've played a lot of these zones all the way through to the end. And a lot of times they just they leave their major plot threads just kind of ambiguously hanging there because, you know, the world is the character, so they can't do too much. Can't move things along too much, because the things that happen in our questing journey can't be too impactful on, like, the shape and scope and the problems of the world. Uh, because they can't make anything change. There's no phasing or anything like that, so... Once we're in places like Wrath of the Lich King, that's when I would be more inclined to play through an entire zone just to see the story, even if I don't need it to level. Uh, that kind of is one of my goals for Wrath, is to play through, like, every quest we can. I want to make that a goal on one of our characters. It'll probably be this character. Uh, it could be this character. I just want to do every quest. Uh, we're going to hit level 80. And there's going to be zones, areas, questing hubs that we don't need to hit level 80. But we're going to do all that stuff anyway. Yeah, like, the, the questing playthrough is going to continue post-80. So that's kind of my goal with Wrath, is to do everything we can. I'd like to do everything on Alliance side and Horde side, but right now I know for sure we're going to do everything on the Horde side. We will have an Alliance playthrough. Depending on how different or interesting those storylines are, it will determine whether or not we do 100% run of it. Uh, my thought process is, like, I'm feeling like a lot of the story beats might be the same. I don't know how much the story was homogenized for Horde and Alliance and Wrath, or if it was, like, entirely separate. I don't remember, but... That's gonna be what determines if we do 100% run also on the Alliance. This is excellent news. With these beasts out of the way, we can begin to venture further into Winter Spring. Are you ready for more? Oh, always. Wild Guardians. In the northern areas of Winterspring, the wild can grow even more ferocious. We must continue our measures there. Hunt the, mo the moon-touched owl beast and explore the area they inhabit. This is dangerous ground, but I know that you will be able to handle the challenge. Return to me after you've slain 13 of the wild kin. Okay. Yes. We can, uh, we can maybe go do that. I don't see why not. I was kind of thinking about taking a little break here, but maybe what I'll do instead is get some coffee while I'm in flight. And uh, we'll go kill these other wildkin. Yeah, let's go do that. It's an easy kill quest. I don't want to leave anything like easy kill quest hanging here. I want to get it done before we go to the plague land. So I'm going to get some coffee and we'll be right back. All right, I did re-up the ribbon buff, and it looks like they're sending us quite far to the north here, uh, into areas we really have not explored before, so that's pretty cool. We do have Berserk Owl Beast also up here, which we don't need. We're looking for these guys, the Moon... Moon Touched. Not crazed. Moon Touched. I will also re-up our potions here in a minute, and maybe we'll eat some buff food as well. Um, hi, hi, how are you? Good? Good. I wonder if he's gonna keep sending us back for like more and more types. That would be okay. I would kind of wish that the quest was given to us back down in Everlook and not uh, on a different continent. Oh, this is a great... This was a great place to fight these guys. It was obviously the best place we could fight them. How about you go bye-bye for a minute? We might as well pop a potion here. It's probably not necessary, but we'll do it anyway. Oh, 
Okay, cool. Uh, let's try to focus more on the guys we actually need. I mean, we have to forget that this quest is basically all about systematically eradicating a possibly sentient species. We have to just kind of overlook that part. Otherwise, what we're doing is, is horrible and we couldn't live with ourselves. The Crazed Owl Beast and the Moon Touched ones kind of have the same coloring. That makes it a little more challenging to spot them. Also, we just might have to fight through some of these guys to uh, continue to be able to look around. It says there are some back here. Yeah, I do see Crazed. It may also be a situation where we want to fight some of these guys to clear them, so they respawn as the ones that we need. I love the verticality here, just because it's like one of the few zones that you get it. In modern WoW zones, like, all you get is verticality. Like, everything is climbable, there's 16 caves. Um, it's, it's all up or down, you know. Uh, but this is pretty unique for vanilla, and so or, I like that. Uh, rarely can you actually, like, in climb up here with a purpose. There is some kind of cave over here. And perhaps we will come down and investigate. Oh, that was a good idea anyway, because we do have some guys over here we need. Something I'm happy about is that it's been a long time since we fought guys that want to run away. That's been nice. Okay, potions have worn off. We do need to re-up those. We will do so after this fight. Oh, that takes the place of strength. Oh, okay, let's do that for a while then. And let's eat some of our food. I want to stick my head in this cave. I can't really tell if it goes anywhere. It might just lead through the underneath the mountain, which would be interesting. Uh, that's kind of what it looks like from here. Yeah, it looks like it just goes through. Right. 
This guy is level 59. So he is parrying basically everything we're doing. <laughs> there we go. Magnificent Gauntlets of the Falcon. Male with agility and intellect. Would be good for an elemental or healing shaman. Just kind of fighting through guys to get where we're going uh which is to this next guy that we need it's gonna be easier than trying to avoid them especially in like a narrow situation like this where we don't have a lot of maneuverability if we don't want to get the ad we're gonna to want to pull this one back a ways To use our trinket heal just to get a little bit of health back. Oh, he's 59. He aggroed from quite a ways off. And now we need to bandage. Someone was asking about the upcoming experience buff that I talked about that Blizzard was going to implement some weeks before the Wrath pre-patch. They were wondering if it was going to be something that you could opt out of. My, my thought is probably not. Sometimes they make them so you can unclick them. But I think it's more like getting the road to 60 or 70 or 80 in, in, in Final Fantasy. is like you can't click it off. It's just on for that character. If, if you're on a server where it's applied to, which will be all TBC servers, you're not going to be able to opt out of it. Uh, somebody made a comment too about that hurting the fresh start and hurting wrath leveling. Like, to be clear, you're not going to have the, the bonus experience leveling from 70 to 80. The bonus experience buff is going to go from weeks before pre-patch, through pre-patch, and up to launch. So while it will affect those leveling new characters on the fresh start servers, 
it's not going to affect actual Wrath of the Lich King leveling. Y you're not going to have this buff when you go into Northrend on your level 70 character. So I just wanted to be clear about that. They're definitely not looking to shorten the Wrath experience, okay? They're, they're planning and doing things that are going to allow them to draw out the Wrath Classic experience. Because I think that they know that for most people, once Cataclysm comes and the old world is remade, that's no longer classic. Once you've changed the old world of Azeroth to the post-Cataclysm versions, that's not WoW Classic anymore. So yeah, I think they're fully aware that... They need to have a plan and have themselves in a technical position where they can continue development off of Wrath uh, to do Classic Plus content. But yeah, so we won't be getting a boost from, from 70 to 80. No, you'll be leveling at whatever the speeds were in uh, the final patch of Wrath. Uh, just to be clear. Don't want to alarm anybody. Okay, yeah, I don't see any of the ones that we really need. And I don't really think I want to go too much further in this direction. Here we go. Let's head back to the east and a little bit to the north and see if we get any respawns back this way. If not, we'll just keep taking out the ones that we come across here as we wait. Here we go. And this will be our last one. Kind of thinking that turning this one in, and then we have a couple of ones that we have to turn in back in Feralis and Ungoro Crater. I think that once we do all that stuff, that might get us to level 57. Uh, let's get ourselves back to town here. We do need to fly back to Blood Venom Post. And I want to get this one turned in. This is not going to end well. Would really rather not get dismounted if we can avoid it, but... We'll see. I think what I'll do, guys, is I'm going to get all this stuff turned in on my own. If he has another kill quest to kill, like, a different type of Owl Beast, I'll probably just do that on my own, get it taken care of, just, like, take the easy experience from it. And uh, next time you see us, uh, next time we are back, we'll be in Eastern Plaguelands. And by Eastern, I mean Western. We'll be in Western Plaguelands, and we'll probably be level 57 by then after getting everything turned in. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. What is going on over here? Can I, like, desecrate this without getting, like, murdered? Dum 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 Don't mind me. 
we are flagged. Oh, that's okay. I should have been doing this the whole time. You guys, you guys mentioned that like desecrating the flame was worth quite a bit of experience. So yeah, there we go. Uh, 8,400 experience. I'll just go around and desecrate some flames if I have to, and that'll get us to uh, where we need to be. What other places we can do it in Gadgetstan? I have to go there to turn something in, I believe, or to like I have to click on an NPC there for a quest. Yeah, for the Yeti quest. So yeah, I have some traveling around to do and some stuff that needs to be taken care of. So I'll do all the traveling stuff. I will see you guys next time over in the Western Plague Lands, where we will probably be concluding our level of 57 to 58 journey, and we'll be concluding our leveling in vanilla. We will be done with the vanilla leveling. We will be moving on into Outland. So yeah, that's probably going to be next episode. Might be the end of our vanilla journey here. So I'm getting pretty excited trying just to like keep pushing forward and not think about it too much but yeah i'm i'm pretty excited to be on the on the verge of going into outland here but yeah thank you guys so much for being here i really do appreciate all of the continued support on this series without you guys showing up every day and uh watching commenting enjoying the content i wouldn't get to do this so i very much appreciate it thank you all so much take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other and we will see you back here again really soon Bye now.